With members of the U.S. Armed Forces being killed abroad on a regular basis in the service of their country, this Memorial Day takes on even more significance. We hear a lot about how U.S. military forces are in the process of training Iraqi soldiers to hopefully one day protect their own country. In this next pod, we get a very rare look at how this is working through the eyes of someone actually involved in the process, Lieutenant John Prettyman. During his tour in Iraq, John filmed a series of pods on what life is like over there. Here is some of what he wants us to know. I'm Captain John Prettyman. I spent the uh, last five years of my life serving in the United States Army. Two of those years I spent in Iraq, and I just happened to bring my uh, video camera along and uh, captured uh, what goes on for a year in Iraq. We're supposed to have 174 soldiers that we start instilling discipline in effective 09 this morning. Training the Iraqi army, it uh, presents its own difficulties, and uh, that is the main mission over in Iraq is to train Iraqi security forces so they can eventually take over and, and protect the, uh, the country. The Iraqi army is a diverse group of individuals. A lot of them had prior military experience with uh, Saddam's regime. A lot of them were just fresh off the street. And uh, believe it or not, there's a lot more that, that want to come and volunteer. There's no shortage in numbers that, that want to join the Iraqi army. Three fights. The guy in front of us that you see was shot by a fellow soldier in the, in the foot while they were horse playing. We also had a lieutenant fire off his nine mil. And the, when one of the fights, the uh, Soldier beat the other soldier with a Kevlar. So it, it was a pretty eventful morning. And the result there is, uh, as you can see, one soldier down. A lot of them have heart and they got good intentions. And they really do want to help their country. Then you got some of them here that just here to collect a paycheck. Uh, the first time I was out there, I think it took two hours just to get, get accountability of all the soldiers that were there. We got our company back on Monday. Today is Thursday, so yesterday was uh, since the bottoms day. I was missing 43 soldiers and 11 AKs, two RPKs that we initially found. So we're, we're in the process of doing our since the bottoms and uh, initiating a property book accountability for all their equipment. That's part of what we're doing today. And then gone from that, all the usual things we do in the United States Army, we've been trying to do with the uh, Iraqi Army. No, it's not big muscles. This is the best living quarters on the post. The improvements here are beds. So let's go in and take a look. In the last uh, 10 days, We've gone from sleeping on the floor and sleeping and eating in the same same building to getting these bunks for the guys and getting them up off the floor place to sleep. We're going to go check out the Iraqi uh, bathroom. It's actually a very clean bathroom for the Iraqis. They like to stand, go to the bathroom, and as you can tell, they do not use toilet paper here. Boots. Boots. Boots today. Today. Yeah, yeah. Today. These guys have never got gotten an issue. They got their first uniforms um, last week, so they're all in uniforms. They have no boots, no backpacks, no no any type of equipment. As you'll see, some of them have hats, some of them don't. Some have Kevlar, so we're taking care of that this morning. Good. We're here at CIA. It'll take us about uh, another hour. We should be done just in time for the DFAC to close this lunch. Then we're going to resume the gunner gate guard. We also have uh, two patrols this afternoon. My concern right now is them stealing all the equipment from each other and uh, not being able to secure that. Me, man. <laughs> you 
broke the camera. I'm G4. Okay. Uh, the biggest challenge is the language difference. You always had to have an interpreter there. It's hard enough to train American soldiers and then to uh, have that language barrier there to train Iraqi soldiers. Even more difficult. Most of the Iraqi army I met were real enthusiastic about learning whatever we could teach them. They want to learn. They, uh, in their hearts, they want to rebuild their country. The state of the Iraqi army right now, it's, it's going to take a little longer to get to a point where they can run their own country. If everything goes as planned, I'd say, I'd say five years to, to get to a point where we can start moving out and they're, they're self-sufficient to take over. Thank you.